One of the most mysterious historical phenomena in Charleston, South Carolina, is the unexplained disappearance and hauntings of Theodosia Burr Elston. Daughter of America's third vice president, Aaron Burr, her restless spirit is reported in multiple locations. Theodosia and her father were very close. In fact, Burr had even written that her intellect and sharp wit had convinced him that women have a soul. In 1807, the then 24-year-old Theodosia Burr saw her beloved father's career take a decidedly downhill turn. Most notably, he had slain founding father Alexander Hamilton in an honour-based duel. He had then committed treason by attempting to establish his own empire in the new Louisiana Purchase Territory. In 1808, after his trial, during which Theodosia provided him with full support, he was acquitted of all charges against him. But he then fled on a ship bound for Europe, where he was to stay in self-imposed exile for four years. When Burr did finally return to America in July 1812, he made port in New York and took up residency there. Theodosia was by then living in South Carolina with her husband, Joseph Alston, and given her loyal devotion to Burr, would have normally headed off to see him as soon as possible. However, tragedy had darkened her days when, a month earlier, her ten-year-old son had succumbed to malaria. It was not until December that she felt able to travel to see her father, and the speediest way was by sea. Her husband was unable to accompany her, as he had recently been sworn in as South Carolina's governor. This meant he would also be in command of the state militia, and with the War of 1812 having commenced a few months before, he could not leave his official duties to join her. Theodosia booked, with trusted family friend Dr Green, her passage on the schooner Patriot, which was sailing for New York on December 31, 1812. Tragically, the ship disappeared off the coast of North Carolina, its crew and passengers never seen alive again. The Patriot never reached its intended destination, and all those on board were recorded as lost at sea. Strangely, the bodies of all the others lost at sea washed up, but Theodosia's was never found. The conjecture and theories around what happened to Theodosia are very extensive, with a combination of the terrible weather and treacherous sandbags in the area high up on the list. But there were other, even darker possibilities. At the time of her disappearance, some very ruthless men had a heinous scheme that operated off the coast. During stormy nights, they would walk a hobbled donkey with a lantern on its neck back and forth along the shoreline. To ships in fear of turbulent weather, the moving light would appear to be a fellow vessel, safely in dock and bobbing reassuringly. In reality, the illusion was a lethal trap. The ill-fated ship would run aground on the sandbars and become stranded, which was when the men on shore would swarm and attack the vessel. Their intention would be to plunder anything of value on board and almost certainly leave no survivors. If Theodosia did perish amidst this scenario, it may explain why her ghost is reported to haunt the beaches of Bald Head Island in North Carolina. Within weeks of the Patriot's disappearance, rumours about her fate began to spread throughout the country. It was assumed that the Patriot had been captured by one of the pirate ships known to terrorise the region and in following years, many deathbed confessions from various elderly or imprisoned pirates were reported in the press. Two men who were executed in 1819 for other crimes were quoted as confessing to having been amongst a mutinous crew on the Patriot. They claimed to have scuttled the ship and slain all on board. In 1833, another man confessed to plundering the Patriot with other pirates who had forced Theodosia to walk the plank to avoid their dishonourable intentions. This was confirmed 15 years later in another deathbed confession by a man who described Theodosia as dressing in all white and clasping her Bible before her dignified descent into the waves. 
Other stories had her kidnapped by an enemy of her father or husband or abducted to Texas or Bermuda. Then there is the strange case of the so-called female stranger who is buried in the St. Paul's Episcopal graveyard in Alexandria, Virginia. It was said that the veiled lady appeared in the city in 1816 with a man purporting to be her husband. She passed not long after, and legend has it that the pair were Theodosia and Dr. Green, recently returned from captivity in the islands. Another clue to Theodosia's fate is the Nags Head portrait discovered by Dr. Poole in 1869. A poor patient of his told him that her husband was a wrecker, someone who scavenged the ships that washed up on the shores off North Carolina. She gave his Nags Head promontory painting find to Dr. Poole in lieu of payment. Although he was never able to authenticate the likeness by family members, the Nags Head portrait now hangs in the Lewis Walpole Library at Yale. Those who believe in the painting's authenticity say that it proves that Theodosia died off the coast of North Carolina by whatever cause. There were fierce storms there on January 2nd and 3rd in 1812, which caused damage to ships near the Patriots' planned journey. It is highly likely that the small vessel was simply overpowered by the storm, but theories of pirates, rogue wreckers, the British, or Theodosia's abduction to some exotic land are equally possible. A legend was to later arise in Bald Head Island that Theodosia roams the shoreline there searching for the painting. One witness to the spectre of Theodosia described the experience like this. Picture yourself on the beach on Bald Head Island, where the moon is shining off the crashing waves and you are probably feeling quite relaxed. You can see in the distance what seems to be a young woman walking in your direction. It's an unusual sight, but you prepare to say a friendly hello to the approaching stranger. You notice one peculiar detail, that she appears to be wearing a long dress, styled like that of a foregone era. Understandably, you'd be wondering why someone would be so formally dressed at this hour for a stroll along the shore, but you think each to their own. As you walk closer to her, you realise, with a healthy level of panic, that the approaching woman appears to be transparent. Then, in a cascading awareness, you notice that she is leaving no footprints in the sand and she is radiating an ethereal glow. A fairly normal reaction would be to instantly let out an involuntary shriek and quickly hot-footed in the opposite direction. Apparently, countless residents and tourists have claimed this as their experience of the encounter on the beach of Bald Head Island. Accounts vary slightly as some witnesses see her being chased by three other spectres who are believed to be the men who killed her. When this sighting is made, Theodosia's pace is understandably much faster as she is obviously reliving her attempt to run for her life. But that's not the only place her very busy spirit has been sighted. Theodosia was on her way to visit her beloved father in New York, and according to some paranormal accounts, she did finally catch up with him. Her ghost seems to have joined that of her father, Aaron Burr, who smashes plates and moves chairs at his former carriage house, which is now a restaurant. At the restaurant, entitled One If By Land, Two If By Sea, in Greenwich Village, many customers and staff have witnessed the flying dishes and chairs being yanked out from under-seated patrons. Theodosia's apparition has been sighted descending the dining room staircase, and several women sitting at the bar have reported having their earrings popped off by an admiring Theodosia. Burr, Alston and various other spirits have also actually been seen and are reputed to haunt the carriage house. One female witness who had her earrings removed by Theodosia recalled that when her foot touched the first step of the staircase, it felt like she was walking on ice and knocked the wind out of her. Today, sightings of Theodosia continue in multiple locations. Many Georgetown residents believe they've seen her ghostly presence around an old brick warehouse by the dock where she boarded the schooner. Others have seen the spectre of a woman thought to be Theodosia dressed all in grey at Debordia Beach where the Alston family kept a summer home. 
Her presence has also been seen around Richmond Hill Plantation as well as the rice fields of the former Oaks Plantation at Brook Green Gardens. There, her son and husband, who never remarried and died aged 37, are buried and there is a memorial but obviously no gravestone for Theodosia. Her ghost is also said to haunt the Grand Strand in Georgetown looking for her father, her restless spirit still yet to find a home.